welcome to our first ever men's health chat. I'm Ava Jones, I'm the communications manager for the Center for Closing the Health Gap. Alongside me is Herschel Chalk, who is the chair of the Black Men's Health Committee here at the Health Gap. So welcome, Herschel. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so we do know that June is Men's Health Month, so we wanted to ask you a couple questions about not only men's health, but uh, black men's health and the importance of having uh, this committee here at the Health Gap. So I think um, some questions out there might be, why don't black men choose to see a doctor? Well, a lot of it is fear. We're afraid of the unknown. Uh, I'm feeling good. She's not complaining. So there's nothing wrong with me. And so we don't want to go to the doctor and be diagnosed with something that we feel might be dreadful. And that's a, that's a, a real fear that, you know, you could be sick. Do you already have symptoms and you just kind of hold them back on it or what happens? Well, sometimes we have symptoms, but we got that he-man mentality and we feel in a couple of days or so it'll go away and I'll be all right. And a couple of days go by and it hasn't gone away and we just keep putting a few more days on to it and so forth. And the fact that I don't need to go to the doctor, I'm still doing everything that I do. And uh, we, it's, it's, a lot of it is just fear. You know, the fact that we're afraid of the unknown and we don't want to know what the unknown is. You know, so it's, it comes down to fear and just the fact that in many cases, we didn't have an example for going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't hardly recall my father going to the doctor. One time we got him to go to the doctor, he went to the hospital and had pneumonia. So they kept him. But other than that, I don't recall him going to the doctor. So I didn't have a good example of going to the doctor. So uh, I also wanted to follow up is, uh, with the question is, um, what are some of the most common mistakes that uh, men make about their personal health? Well, we don't want to get a prostate exam, you know, which is something that I feel is very necessary. We, we don't, diabetes, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we don't have the diet that we should have. We get into bad health and we don't have the diet and shouldn't, don't eat like we ought to eat to make ourselves feel better and to get better. We've got that mentality that everything's gonna change. I don't have to change, everything else is gonna change. But it's necessary in many cases that a man has to change his diet, has to change his way of living, has to change some of his attitudes about living and wanting to live in order to get healthy and do better. Now we do want to remind those of you who are watching, um, feel free to send us questions. Our social media manager, Lauren, will wave us and we'll stop the conversation to answer that question if you have any uh, for myself or for Herschel. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, what can men do to improve their pro prostate health? You mentioned that it's so important to get it checked. So what else can they do once they, they have that first uh, check and how can they take care of their prostate? Well, one thing to me is attitude. Uh, you've got to have the right attitude to want to do something about it. So uh, change your diet. Uh, the Cancer Society will say that uh, you need to cut back on red meat. You need to do a lot, get a lot of fiber, do vegetables and fruit. Um, I can agree with that, but I also feel that you just need to be able to cleanse your body of a lot of the toxins and so forth that we get personally. I don't feel red meat is the cause of it. Our grandparents had no problems with red meat, but they had natural red meat. Okay, now, I was gonna say, but now, we, we know better, we do better, so right. wait. Okay. But now the meat has so many uh, uh, injections and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and they're giving all these hormones to the animals to make them bigger and faster, and grow faster and so forth. And so we're getting a lot of the hormones. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's not doing us any good. You know, so you, that's why I say a cleanser to clean those hormones out so that you can go ahead and continue. Because I mean, we like red meat. You know, we like pork. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me it's not a matter of stop eating it all together, 
-hmm. but maybe be a little moderate when you do it mm -hmm. and, and not do it so late at night. Mm -hmm. You know, do it earlier so that you, your body can digest it and you can help avoid it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, um, and just, just be aware mm -hmm. of the things that you need to do. Get your checkups with the doctor so that they can check your PSA and, and make sure that it's at a level where it ought to be. Right. And right. then if it's rising, they need to find out why and things of that nature. But, you know, it stems with going to the doctor okay. and talking to the doctor about it. So does that also include having a good, you know, personal relationship with your doctor to the point where you do feel comfortable with them? I know that's a hard subject considering. Well, you know, I believe in a personal relationship with a doctor because of the fact, you know, if I go to a doctor and I want to ask him some questions and he brushes through my questions real quick and not really explaining to me, to my understanding, mm -hmm. my thing is I'm going to get me another doctor because I'm paying him to take care of me. And if he's not giving me answers that I understand and taking time to talk to me about my conditions to my satisfaction, I don't need that doctor. I go get another one. There's many of them out there mm -hmm. and we do the same thing with all of them. We pay them for their service, but their service has to be my service. And if they're not giving me my service, why should I give them my money? Mm -hmm. Well, to bring back um, something you mentioned earlier, Herschel, which was, you know, you might not have watched your father or your grandfather go to the doctor. So how do you begin that conversation? You know, ask the doctor to slow down to explain it to you. Well, you know, I think we have to come off of the ego. A lot of times we don't want to say that we don't understand because we don't want to appear to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. You know, but to me, if you don't understand what the doctor's saying, wait a minute, doc. Break that down to everyday language. Mm -hmm. I don't understand medical terms. I didn't go to medical school. Break that down to everyday language so that I can understand. And if I got a relationship with the doctor, I'm like, bring that down to the street level. Mm -hmm. Help me to make sure that I understand what you're saying. I don't want to leave out of here with the wrong impression. I want to know exactly what's going on. So it's a matter of us taking charge of our health and not being afraid or ashamed to question the doctor or to talk to him about our health. Uh, Herschel, I also wanted to ask you about um, not only the relationship uh, with your doctor, but just following through on that doctor's instructions. Like say if your doctor does ask you, you know, to cut back on, on red meat, how important is your follow through as a patient? Well, to me, your follow-through is important. The, the most important thing is the fact of how well do you want to live? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to live a healthy life? Do you want to live a long life? You know, if you care about living a long life, then you're going to take into consideration what he's saying and try to work within that parameter. Mm -hmm. but, but so many times... You hear men say, oh, I don't, I don't care, you know. And, and with me, after everything I've been through, I still want to live to see triple digits. Okay. I'm not afraid of dying, mm -hmm. but I'm enjoying life here, and I want to enjoy it as much as I can. So I try to do what the doctor tells me. Um, if I have questions about it, I will question the doctor and have, a, have him explain to me further what it is that I need to do and why do I need to do it. Don't just tell me and not tell me why. Right. Right. Well, as I did mention earlier, uh, Herschel is the chair of the Black Men's Health uh, Committee here at the Health Gap. Tell us a little bit about the committee and, and what you're responsible for. I know you host some big events, um, the main one being uh, November or fall. Um, talk to us about the committee. Well, We've got a committee of men that we come together and we try to come up with ideas that we feel are beneficial to black men's health, where we can educate and give information. Um, 
we usually try to bring in a good speaker who will draw men to the seminar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to do. It's hard getting black men to come out and find out about health or to find out how they can improve their situation in life. Uh, we, we, we just don't want to admit to anything. You know, it's, it's that he-man, that ego. Mm -hmm. All those things are detrimental to us. And, and the fact that so many times we think we know it all. You know, and so it's, it's the committee takes and tries to have a subject that is going to appeal to men that will draw them in. And a lot of times, like we did with Dick Gregory, uh, he brought a lot of people in mm -hmm. because of being Dick Gregory. Um, and so we try to have named people who will draw people in so that we can educate. That's the most important thing. It's about education and knowing about your health. You know, so many times in my talking to men all the time about prostate cancer and the effects of it, so many men don't know. They don't know what they can do to take care of different things, you know, so they go ahead and suffer needlessly, you know. So it's about education and, and keeping people informed about their life and the aspects of it to make it better. When you talk about so many different uh, topics, it's not just prostate. You talked previously, I know, about um, mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about diabetes, hypertension. What else have you talked about with the committee and trying to bring attention to? Because there's so many health topics we know, but right, right. Um, there are some large ones that are, uh, you know, I would think leading uh, killers of African American men. So you're right. Um, we did talk about diabetes. Mm -hmm. We've talked about um, prostate cancer. We've talked about mental health. Um, and, and we're thinking about doing another one mm -hmm. on mental health, uh, different sides of it, you might say, uh, because I don't know a whole lot about mental health. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in the community, there's not a lot of education on mental health or health, period. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like especially in our community, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it's necessary that we try to be able to dig down deep and get information that we can give to the public to understand and to know because health covers so many things. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a wide spectrum when you talk about health. Right, we say it all the time, it's where you live, where you work, where you play, that's, that's where you right. go to school. That's right. Do you want to remind people that you are open to asking us questions, not only about the Black Men's Health Committee, but about uh, prostate cancer or prostate health? Uh, did want to ask you, we kind of started to touch on that, what it means to lead a healthy lifestyle. So what are some things that men can do to combat that uh, you know, sedentary lifestyle or you know, going home, sitting on the couch, not being active. What can we do about that? Well, you know, we need to get out and do a little walking, mm -hmm. do a little exercise. But, but you know, it, it's kind of difficult. And I say that because I go back, I'm going back to my childhood days. We never spent time in the house. We were outside all the time, awesome. summer or winter, doing something. Okay. It was like mom and dad would tell you, get your behind outside and play, mm -hmm. do something. We'd make up games and everything. Now, you talk about computers and so forth and how wonderful they are, but they're also a detriment. <laughs> because young folks come in, they get on the computer, they do a lot of things, they've got all these games they play on the computer, on TV, so they don't get outside to do anything. And as long as they're quiet and they're not getting in my hair, a lot of times parents aren't worried about them, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so the kids do it, and they take the footsteps of the parent a lot of times. 
So dad comes in from work and that's what he's doing too. He's just sitting there, he's not doing anything, not very active, not saying that he isn't tired and so forth. But a lot of times we have to set an example for the young folks, you know, uh, the fact of just getting out, doing a little bit of something, you know, maybe even take the kids out, come on, let's go out and play, uh, get a ball and a bat. Teach them how to hit a ball. Boys or girls, it doesn't make any difference because young folks are getting scholarships today for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, bowling, baseball, basketball, football, soccer. You name golf. You name the sport, there's a scholarship for it. Now, to me, you get out and help the kids so that they can help you when it comes time to go to college and save your pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a push for a scholarship and a push for active lifestyle. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, if you get active, the kids can be active and they can help you out in the long run. Okay. So what are some of those questions that you may want to ask your doctor, you know, on your annual wellness visit? Well, how's my cholesterol, Doc? Do I have diabetes? And if I do, how is it? And what can I do to combat it? Um, how's my prostate? How does that look? Mm -hmm. And what does 3.9 mean on my PSA? What does that mean? Well, your PSA has numbers assigned to it. Mm -hmm. and, and the numbers are what the doctors go by to see if there's a possibility of cancer. And when it gets so high, they say there's a level of four, and, and that's the safe range from zero to four. But if it gets over four, then they really want to start checking it. And so if they think that there might be some cancer there, they'll do a biopsy, and uh, the biopsy will tell whether or not there's cancer present. But, you know, um, if you've got an ache or a pain, Tell the doctor about the ache or pain and find out why you have that ache or pain. You never know what it can bring about. Mm -hmm. When you're a younger man, you always have to worry about things like testicular cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to the doctor about that. You know, because you never know what can be present. And sometimes if you're going in for a physical, make sure you're getting a complete physical checking everything. All right. Well, should you be talking to your doctor about, I don't know, your stress level, even if it's not, I don't know, blood pressure related? Well, you know, you should be checking your blood pressure. And if you have stress, you have to change your attitude. You know, because uh, to me, I'm not a doctor, but to me, stress a lot of time is self-inflicted because you let everything bother you. You know, in my opinion, if I can't do nothing about it, I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to let it bother me. Mm -hmm. So if I can't control it, there's no need in it bothering me. And, and so the important thing is you have to be able to put stress aside. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, a lot of times something has to happen in life to make you get that outlook. Cancer made me get that outlook. I don't have stress. I don't let it bother me because life is too precious. Okay. Again, uh, this is our first ever uh, men's health chat. June is a uh, men's health month and joining me is Herschel Chop, who is our chair of the Black Men's Health Committee here at the Health Gap. And I also wanted to ask you a little bit about um, what people can do to maybe um, share the word about good health with say their uncle, you know, someone who uh, might not go to the doctor now, might be scared, what can they do to, to talk to them, to encourage them to go uh, to see a doctor or to get screened at say a health expo? Now that's a difficult question. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say that because of the fact that I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I had uh, surgery and everything, got rid of my cancer. My father was having some problems, but he wouldn't talk to me. And, and him being the type of person he was, I really could not approach him about that. 
And, and so a lot of times it's difficult telling a relative or something. Mm -hmm. Now, as I go around the country and I'm talking to men, it's no problem. We don't have that personal relationship and I, I talk to them about it, I'm very straightforward about it, and I will ask them questions. And generally, they don't have any problem talking to me about it. Mm -hmm. But when you're speaking of family and so forth, you know, a lot of times, the older relatives will take an attitude because they don't want to share. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to know what their problems are. And so therefore, they're going to suffer, and they're not going to let you know. But I say keep trying, uh, be like that good wife, nag on. <laughs> keep on, keep on staying on them and talking to them about it. And eventually you might break them down. You might get them to understand. Let them know, I'm not trying to get into your personal business, mm -hmm. but because I love you, I'm trying to be helpful. I want to make sure that you're going to be around here for a while. You know, use grandkids, nieces, and nephews as an example because I want you to be around to get instill in them some of the values you instilled in me. A lot of times we got to make them feel as though it's necessary for them to be around so that the younger folks will be able to learn from them. You know, we, we have the ego, but we like to know that somebody feels as though they need us. You know, so a lot of times you got to make them feel and let them know that they are needed in order for grandchildren or nieces and nephews to be able to get the right education from the elders so that they can grow and, and be a little knowledgeable. Okay. So as you have traveled the country, what are some of the common questions that, that people have for you or want to talk about you with that you, that you feel comfortable sharing? Well, basically, I'm going around the country because of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing that men talk to me about, and the women, is incontinence, where they cannot control their bladder, mm -hmm. and ED, erectile dysfunction. And so, so many times they have these problems, but they don't know that there are remedies and things that you can do to take care of the situation so you don't feel embarrassed and be in a situation to where it changes your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen men that incontinence control their lifestyle because of the fact they might be wearing five, six, seven, eight diapers a day because they're just constantly peeing and, and can't do nothing about it. And, and so therefore they don't want to go anywhere. They're afraid they might have an odor or they're afraid they're going to have an accident but there's things that you can do to take care of that situation and, and that's the important thing um, same way with ED you know a, a single man he's afraid to approach a woman to meet her and talk to her or to date because of the fact that the situation comes down to wanting to have sex and he can't perform what's he go tell her you know so he doesn't want to get into that situation because it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Because a man feels there's certain things that he ought to be able to do. And if he can't do them, then he doesn't feel like he's a total man. Mm -hmm. and, and so to emphasize and understand the fact that you can take care of these situations, you know, and, and go on and live what we consider to be a normal life, mm -hmm. you know, to me that's very important. Uh, I was going to ask you, in your opinion, why is it important to have a Men's Health Month, to recognize that it's Men's Health Month? Well, <laughs> men don't pay any attention to health, so this kind of brings it to their awareness. You know, and sometimes you'll find a man who gets concerned and wants to get more information. And, and to me, I'm always the type of person, if I go out and speak, and there's only one person there, I'm happy because I can share with one who can share with one who can share with one. So it's a matter of being able to educate and, and let people know the things that are necessary and the things that we need to do. And, and a Men's Health Month, it needs more publicity 
but anything involving men and health does not get much publicity because we men sit back and we don't raise a stink mm -hmm. about our health. Mm -hmm. Now, if we got like the women and followed their path, we could have a whole lot of things done for men's health, but men have to speak up. We have to come together. The women gave us a road map mm -hmm. with pink ribbons and everything. Everything is about breast, breast cancer. Everybody is doing something to help fight breast cancer. You see the football players with pink gloves and baseball players with pink this and pink that. Everything is about breast cancer. But it should be because the women fought to get that out there, to make it a, a known thing, a known priority. Mm -hmm. And we men just sit back and we watch. We don't do anything. Even in Congress, the majority of men, they don't care nothing about men's health. They got the best health in the world. All they're caring about is themselves. They're not caring about anybody else. So it, it's important that men understand that health is a priority. And we need to prioritize it more amongst ourselves. And it's going to keep the fact that we keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. We keep emphasizing it. We keep pressing on it. And eventually, maybe we'll get enough men to come together that we can make enough noise that we can grow and grow and make it better. Well, and that is the you know important part about this chat today, You know, bringing awareness to not only Men's Health Month, but uh, prostate cancer awareness, and of course, our Black Men's Health Committee. So thank you so much for this chat, Herschel. We appreciate it. And if you need more information, be sure to uh, like and share this video. Uh, let people know that June is Men's Health Month and that there is something that you can do. Right. But don't forget about it in June. Men's right. Health Month should be this all year true. long. <laughs> At least your personal health too. There so, you yeah. go. Okay, thank you very much, Herschel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you.